What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Supergirl Season 5, Episode 18, The Missing Link. So this was kind of an up and down episode for me. Uh, on the one hand, seeing Lex's plans come to fruition, seeing Lex in general in action is a lot of fun because he's still easily the best character that they've introduced on this show. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed watching his plan take place and how he sort of manipulated all the pieces. There are some elements, though, about it, and it mainly comes down to the people around him and how they're reacting and how they're acting about his plan that kind of puts me off a little bit. Uh, first of all, the whole non cherry thing that Lena's been trying to do in the prison. Like I was saying earlier this season, I'm pretty sure I said there was going to be something else that she didn't account for that was going to cause an issue. And sure enough, she didn't account for what happens when people deal with fears that they don't normally, you know, the... The irrational fears, like claustrophobia. And so this one guy freaks out, hurts somebody, and apparently in hurting somebody, that's all it took for it to set off a chain reaction where now this guy that got hurt is now going to punch somebody else, and now that guy's going to react, and basically it's all going to fall apart, kind of as I was expecting it to. Um, the one thing, though, that was weird about all of this is after this is all going down, they're like, all right, well, we need to go do this thing. It's going to reset it. So they have to go through the prison, and for some reason this other guy whose name escapes me, is it Steve, maybe? Steven? Possibly? I don't remember, but it's the, the little nerdy guy with the glasses. For some reason he's like, oh, I'll go too. I'm like, why? <laughs> and so it leads to this odd scene where he gets tackled and tripped and then starts being choked, and then they go in and save his life. And I'm like, okay, but he just got hit. Which means now he's going to react, right? Nope. Doesn't, doesn't affect him at all. The only reason they brought him along is so after Lena resets the whole thing and does whatever she does with the Q-Wave thing, it's just so he can open his eyes and be like, oh, I feel like I was before. And that's the only reason he was there. So they could have that emotional scene of like, oh no, it didn't work. So that just seemed kind of pointless to me. But Lex's reaction when Lena tells him, I realize now what you're trying to do and I'm not going to be you. It was very interesting to see how Lex essentially, he knew this was all going to fail. And he was waiting for that moment so he could finally be like, look, your way isn't going to cut it. Let's try my way. And he, I mean, he even said he got really pissed off because <laughs> he's like, I could have interfered, but I didn't. Just that feeling of... Yeah, I, I could see that from Lex. I could see him being very patient. He, this is not normally how he works. Normally he would step in and he would actually... He would have probably done something to mess up Nanda Cherry a lot sooner. So that way he could just go ahead and get her on his side. But he actually did sort of step off, step away and say, You know what? I'm going to let it fail on its own. And then once it fails, that's when I'll step in and she'll be mine. And that still didn't work. <laughs> and so to see his frustration and his reaction was not only very genuine, it was very funny for me as well. Just because, I mean, this is very Lex of him. Um, however, the final scene, whenever he finally gets the call um, outside the prison from Gemma and she's like, yes, you're welcome on the ship. The explosion behind him was god-awful. Because first of all, it's supposed to blow up part of the prison, I'm assuming. And it didn't. The building was still very intact. And the very, very fake CGI fire was clearly only on the outside of the building. I'm like, that's... Um, did the, the CGI artist just not really pay attention for this scene? They're like, hey, you know what? Let's just put fake fire behind him. Surely that'll be enough, right? <laughs> like, People aren't going to look closely and see that the building is very clearly intact, even though the fire is supposedly spreading throughout the entire thing. <laughs> it was really bad. Um... And then on top of that, Brainy's whole role in this as well. Again, I just, I don't understand how he can't see what elements are part of Lex's plan. You know, again, I, I feel like they're implying that Lex's plan is not logical, that it's not, that, that it's basically just all a bunch of chaos and there's no real plan behind it. When in reality, like I've said before, it is very logical. It's just in a way that it keeps others guessing. You know, like Leviathan, if he just went straight forward and tried to pander to them, that would get Supergirl to go after him very heavily. So he knows he has to be very conversed, or 
covert. He has to make sure that it's under the radar, so that way it doesn't seem like it's definitely him, so Supergirl doesn't have a ton of evidence, because if she just goes after him, the, pu the public will turn against her, because she doesn't have the evidence for it. So even if she suspects it's him, unless there's pure evidence to show that he did it, she can't go after him for it. So he has to play both sides, and he has to be covert about what he's doing behind the scenes. So yeah, there's going to be some stuff that if you look at it, you're like, well, that doesn't make sense for him to do because that doesn't help either side. Like it helps one and not the other, or it helps them both. Exactly, that's the point. He's trying to play both sides. And I feel like from Brainy's perspective, because he is such a logical being, he should be able to look at this and see, okay, so this is all pro probably part of Lex's plan. You know, Ramakan being caught, probably part of his plan. Ramakan wanting to be caught, probably something that was suggested. Him taking the kryptonite, probably something that he offered to Le uh, Leviathan. Like, all of it, I'm just sitting here thinking, yeah, this is all part of his plan. And Brainy's like, wait, you did all of this? <laughs> Are you sure you're being based on logic? Because it seems like you're only based on 1 plus 1 equals 2. And that's the only logic that makes sense to you. If you decided to go, you know, instead of just 1 plus 1 equals 2, you add, like, 2 plus 1 plus 1, you know, in parentheses, minus 2 equals 2. <laughs> like, that, that for some reason just doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, why would you add the plus 2 and the minus 2? They cancel each other out. Well, because it makes it look a little bit more confusing, and that's Lex's point. <sighs> so that whole part of it has just been really frustrating to me. On top of that, what they're doing with Brainy and Nia, I just don't care. Um, Magon and John, I don't, again, don't really care. They're bringing back that romance, and she's like, oh, I'm so happy I'm back. And he's like, oh, I'm happy you're back, too. And it just, who cares? <laughs> who really cares? And on top of that, the fight scene in the DEO was pathetic. <laughs> like, seeing Ramakan at his full powers, kind of cool, because they did a very good job showing how powerful he is with the staff. But then Jean and Magan show up because, you know, the kryptonite is affecting Kara. Nia has been basically knocked to the ground and she's protecting herself with the powers. And then Brainy got trapped under some rubble, which I don't know why that rubble was stronger than he is. Because it shouldn't be, but whatever. So then Magan and Jean show up. Jean goes to help Brainy. Magan just, like, flies up in the air. She's like, hey, Ramakan. What? <laughs> You're just going to fly there in the air doing nothing? And then John, God, no! I'm like, okay, is this just so she can die? And then he shoots her out of the air because she doesn't move. She falls next to Supergirl, and then John goes over to phase them through all the glass that's falling on top of him. I'm like, what was the point of that scene? <laughs> there was nothing there. It just, stuff happened. I, I don't know. I mean, again, the action, action on the show has not been the strong point, but there have been some really stupid fight scenes in especially the past couple seasons where it just feels like they don't really know how to end a fight with these super powerful beings so they're like yeah we'll just have him bring down the building what happens between those two points who cares just have him fly around a little bit have one of them go flying from side to side one of them gets hit falls to the ground that'll be enough and then we'll just have the building fall that's fine <laughs> there's got to be a bit more thought put into these fights and it just feels like there's not any, really. Um, Alex in this was just sort of pointless. She goes and sees Samwise again. Um, just, it's either Samwise or Rudy. That's all I can see him as. I can't see him as any other character. And I know that's kind of bad because most actors don't want to get stuck with that feeling of, oh, you only see me as this one and you're only going to cast me in that type of role. But I don't know. He's, just, he's played some very iconic characters that that's basically all I can see him as anymore. Um... But, yeah, I mean, their whole side story was just kind of pointless. They just, they they see the real him this time instead of, you know, Jean's brother. Um, and just, I don't really understand what they're trying to look for. I guess there's some documents that might be about Leviathan, and they're going to look into it, and somebody starts shooting at them. They don't know who it's supposed to be, but I don't know. They were able to, <laughs> it was kind of funny because I'm thinking we're going to get a look at the shooter, but we never do. And all I can think is, Alex, you should be looking back, right? Because he chased you literally all the way from that dark hallway down to the garage. Which means you have plenty of chances to see who's shooting at you. And you never once looked to see. Um, and somehow they were able to get all the way down there and just 
keep shooting at them even as they get in the car. So it just it seemed very very odd <laughs> that there was no sign of oh Alex got a glimpse of who the shooter is and you can have that too you can have her see the shooter without showing us who the identity is because clearly they're keeping that in secret I don't know why um, but I'm assuming it's going to be somebody that we know maybe Andrea who knows um, but you can have her look back and see the shooter but the shooter's got a mask on or something that that's one way to show us exactly what's happening so we can actually make out what's going on and not be like, wait, but how did they get all the way down to the garage and how are they still firing bullets? Like, are they that fast and they're following the car the whole way? <laughs> and they can hit the car with precise aim, but they couldn't hit Alex or whatever his name is, Sam. <laughs> I'm just going to call him Sam because, again, he's Sam. Um, they, they couldn't hit him, like either of them. The whole way, but then once they get in the car, suddenly now every single shot is hitting its target. <laughs> Just like, that's that's some good uh, framing right there to show, oh, our good guys got away, but the shooter's really good, but they somehow got away. Uh, and then the other final thing, I think this is the final thing to talk about, is what's going on with, like, William and Kelly, because obviously they're super important guys. Like, William, such a good character. I mean, he just, he showed up because he looked like he was going to be possibly the bad guy, but then you find out he's not. He's not a jerk. He's not married. Possible love interest for Kara. But he's really focused on finding his friend. But then after the crisis, well, let's have him and Kara hook up maybe. Ah, that's not going to work out. So let's just go back to him looking for who killed his friend. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. They just, they have nothing for him. So in this one, they have him working with Kelly. And they find out about Eve. And then they go to Andrea about it. And what's weird about this is I thought for sure that before Crisis, they knew that Andrea was a, uh, basically a pawn of Leviathan. Like, I thought they found that out at some point because they saw she was that shadowy figure. Am I mistaken about that? Because I could have sworn that happened. I know Lena knows about Andrea because obviously... She found out about her, and she got the, the pendant or whatever back from her. So I know Lena knows, but did everybody else find out? Because I feel like I remember them seeing her without her mask. And obviously, you know, also uh, William's friend, too. They saw that he was working for Leviathan as well. But my, my thought process is, if you know Andrea was working with Leviathan, it seems like she's not right now, but... <laughs> She probably still is, even if she doesn't know it. Like, the Viathan's probably still using her, because they were using Obsidian before. So why is nobody going to her and being like, wait a minute, you have this Gemma friend. Could she be tied to Leviathan? I mean, nobody's really trying to connect those dots, so either I'm mistaken and they didn't know about Andrea being a pawn for Leviathan, or they're just really stupid and not thinking, oh, in this new world, maybe Andrea still has ties to Leviathan. Either way, there's something going on. Either I'm stupid and I, I mistook or I misremembered them finding out about Andrea, or the writers are stupid, which is a lot more likely in my opinion. I mean, not, not saying that I can't be stupid, but how many times have the writers been stupid compared to how many times have I been stupid? Probably the writers a lot more. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just something that I'm wondering about, and maybe we'll find out in this next episode since Lena's going to be helping them if she reveals to them, oh yeah, Andrea was working for Leviathan before Crisis, so maybe she still is. If that is a reveal for our main characters, then I'm going to raise my hand and go, okay, so I just forgot, I didn't remember whether or not they found out about Andrea. But if they're like, oh yeah, Andrea, right, she was working for Leviathan, you think she still is? Then I'm just going to smack my forehead and go, oh, you think? Um, I don't know why I did that before I even saw whether or not they did that. But anyways, on to the final episode for this season. I hope it's good. I mean, it's got Lex in it, so it's at least going to be enjoyable at some parts, which is more than I can say for anything about Batwoman this season. So yeah, here we go. On to the final one. See you there. And now, episode 19, Immortal Combat. I feel like a lot of these CW shows, after the crisis, they were just like, you know what? We really have something going here. So let's just end all of our seasons on a cliffhanger where we don't go through half of our stories and finish them. 
That way people will just keep coming back because the crisis means people want to see more, right? Here's the problem, though. Crisis, just like with Endgame, feels like it's the end of a, of a saga. You know, you've got the end of a lot of storylines. The one that started all of this to begin with, Arrow, basically ended after Crisis. So you've got to give us a reason to keep watching. You can't just say, oh, Crisis is enough. People will want to keep watching. No, look at Marvel. I mean, they've still done well, but that's because they've still created a lot of intrigue by adding in this idea of the multiverse. That's what's kept people coming back. It wasn't because Endgame was so good. It's because they had to do something different and innovative and clever and enjoyable after Endgame. That's what's got us coming back for more. That's what's got us to keep watching even after what was basically the end of a lot of stories in Endgame. Crisis was in, in the end of a lot of stories. They did create some new in, intriguing timeline stuff, you know, bringing all these stories into one universe instead of there being a multiverse. Kind of an intriguing concept, and they've done some interesting things. Even on Batwoman, there was an interesting concept that they used on there. However, the story in each of these individual seasons... Just, it's it's okay. It's not something that's making me go, oh, I can't wait to see more. And of course, Batwoman have already raved enough about how awful the story was there. But for Supergirl, this idea of Leviathan, it was an intriguing one. However, it kind of took a, a bit of a backseat during Crisis. And then when it came back, still Leviathan was the enemy. Still Leviathan was, were the people to take down. Now, I'm still curious about Leviathan, but you got to give me something to go on. And honestly, at the end of this, it's not like I want to still see Leviathan as the enemy. I thought it was going to be where Lex helps everybody take him down, and then he becomes the main threat for next season because he sort of upseats them. He becomes the new seat of power, basically, in their absence. Instead, there's so many unanswered questions that they're bringing into next season that I just don't really care about yet. And maybe they will do a good job with it. I'm, I'm holding off my judgment on that part of it. But, I mean, you've left so many hanging plot threads. You know, you've still got Andrea who just apparently activated her powers fully, which I thought she'd already used them at one point, but whatever. I I'm, was not really answered whether or not the team knew about Andrea being a part of Leviathan. You know, they showed in the whole... Previously on Supergirl, they showed a point where Lena was like, oh, Leviathan haven't activated her yet. Okay, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be looking at Andrea as a possible possible connection to Leviathan. Because then you would have been like, wait a minute, this Gemma Cooper woman, I don't remember her before Crisis. So maybe there's something special about her. But nobody thought to even look at that as a possible Leviathan connection. So everybody in the show is stupid, confirmed. Um, but yeah, I mean... She decides she's not going to help Leviathan and not going to kill Supergirl because Lena talks her down. So that's kind of up in the air, though. What's she going to do from here? Um, Obsidian is now basically trashed. So for her and for her father, what's going to happen? I mean, no idea. For Leviathan, Brainy's little thing managed to shrink three of them. But there's still more Leviathan out there. Now, granted, this it could just be where it's these three and then Gemma and then whoever is in charge of Leviathan. So it could just be these five and that's it. But first of all, and I'll, I'll talk a bit, bit more in depth about Brainy's side of things, but the fact that it only brought three of them in, like his code must have been very faulty. Because <laughs> I figured his code was going to bring all of them in, but instead it only brought those three. And then for some reason Gemma just zapped out for whatever reason. But Gemma's still alive. The person who is in charge of Leviathan still out there somewhere. Still don't know who it is. We don't know who was shooting at Alex and um, Sam in the last episode. So that's still an unanswered thing. Lex apparently takes the, the three shrunken Leviathan members to his mom. And now they're like, yes, let's go kill Supergirl. So that's setting up for next season. The two to be continued. Ooh, you got us. I'm so excited to watch... All of these stories that you didn't answer any questions for. <laughs> Just so many things that they didn't wrap up at the end of the season. And again, I feel very much like Batwoman. It's kind of funny, the confidence that you think your show is just that good and that high up. That you're like, oh, we're not even going to write an ending this season. Because we know you're coming back for more. 
we know you're going to come back. That in itself is hilarious that you think you're that great of a writer <laughs> or writing team, whatever. Because you're not. I mean, honestly, the only reason I'm still watching is because I do these reviews. <laughs> if I didn't do these reviews, I probably would have given up on most of these shows except for maybe The Flash. Like, I don't even know if I would have watched these other shows just to watch Crisis. I only watch those shows because I have a review channel where I talk about this stuff. And I was curious to see how the other shows tied in. So, you're not really doing much to bring people back in. Aside from all the representation that you're doing. Which can only hold people for so long. you got to do something outside of that. Because if you don't give substance, you're not going to get people interested. And that's just the fact of it. So... Yeah, the fact that they, again, just like with Batwoman, ended on this huge cliffhanger where you have so many storylines that are building up for season, well, in Batwoman's case, season two. In this case, season six, which I think is actually the last season, if I'm not mistaken. I just, I feel like you, you've really messed things up and you've messed up the ending of the season, which could have been pretty interesting to see Lex possibly even teaming up with the team because he realizes, crap, I need the help of other people because Leviathan is too big. Instead, you just decided, no, no, no. We're going to have Lex just be the bad guy. And that's the end of it. whoop de doo I don't know. Because when he had to help out... Honestly, he didn't even help out in Crisis. All he did was just backstab everybody. So the concept of him working with heroes is still something that has not been fully realized. Because every single time they're doing this, they're like, nah, let's just have Lex backstab everyone. Oh, we, we get to a point where he's a paragon and he's got to work with these other paragons, one of them being Supergirl, to save the universe. Now nah, let's just have him backstab everybody. That's Backstabbing is just what he does. Leviathan, this big evil corporation that wants to destroy the world. Eh, let's just have him work with Leviathan and backstab everybody. That's just, it's that simple. So, I don't know. I'm just, I'm frustrated that they... For some reason, think that that's all Lex is. It's just He's just a backstabber. Nothing else to his character. Because he is an intriguing character. And especially the way they've written him. There's a chance for him to be a clever chess player and see what the best move is. Because I think for this season, it would have been a better move for him to play along with Supergirl. And then possibly take Leviathan over or take their power at the last second. Whatever it is. So that he could use that against Supergirl. Something along those lines. But instead they just made him essentially an agent of Leviathan. And he just wanted to kill Supergirl and her friends. And then it, he's like, oh yeah, and then after that we'll kill Leviathan. It's like, that, that just means he's an evil bad guy. <laughs> like That's all it is. He's basically working with Leviathan to kill Supergirl and her friends. And then he was going to backstab them later. So we don't want him to win now. It would have been more interesting if we wanted Lex to win because he was going to take down Leviathan. Ugh, so many missed opportunities. But with that being said, I still liked a lot of what... Just just seeing Lex in general, a lot of fun. Even at the end, whenever Brainy essentially sacrifices himself, it was kind of interesting to see him get frustrated. But not because Brainy stopped Leviathan... It's because he expected Brainy to wait to stop Leviathan until after he got this pin that was going to protect him, which would give Lex and everybody a chance to kill Supergirl first. Um, so it was kind of interesting to see, like, no, this part of my plan, it was still part of the plan. It just happened a little earlier than I was expecting. I didn't expect you to kill yourself, so I guess I'll just have to move to plan B. Again, very much in the Lex vein of being a, a good chess player and seeing, okay, well, this move didn't work, but luckily I had this backup move just in case. Um, so, I mean, seeing him at work is still very fun and interesting. I just feel like they would have been a lot more fun to <laughs> actually see it, <laughs> see a, a different concept taken on other than, no, oh, Lex is just a bad guy. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, but as far as... Kara in this one, you know, just basically talking to everybody in inside of Obsidian. I mean, it's fine. Just another hope message talking about pain is what we have to deal with, which is something that has been shown throughout the majority of the seasons. So I feel like this this was their moment to talk to the, the dumb audience that they have and just be like, all right, guys, so in case you didn't get the message for this season that we spelled out time and time again, we're just going to have Kara say it to the entire world. And there's the message written down, plain view, perfect there you go. Now you don't even have to think about what we were trying to show you. We can just tell you what we were trying to show you. There we go. Um, and that's just, I mean, 
I, I expect it because the CW is written for babies. <laughs> um, but it was still just kind of like, seriously, are we really spelling out the message that they told us over and over again this season? Are we really doing this? And that's what they were doing. So, um, Lena's scene with Andrea was well done. And again, I, I do have to give credit. The acting in the show, for the most part, very solid. And Lena and Kara, for me, are kind of the two standouts, at least right now. I thought Alex, before they gave her her stupid little storyline of everything she's been through, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to get to that new suit because, oh my gosh, talk about overhyping with your writing. Um, but yeah, I think those two really show in moments just how good of an actor they are. And... Lena in this one had another moment to shine whenever she's talking down Andrea. I thought it was a really good moment for her, and I thought she really showed the pain of realizing kind of what she'd been through. Uh, and honestly, I mean, all of her explanation, the scene where she and Kara were, were talking as well, I just remember that one, really well done. The acting was good, and honestly, Kara spelling out basically everything that she was put through. She's like, I kept my secret to protect you, when you found out you, you did this to me, you did this to me, you did this to me, I'm like, honestly, this is a good scene. Like, it's not the most poetically written, it's not the, the best, but it was a good scene to kind of say, yeah, let's spell out basically everything Lena did because Kara made one mistake, but that mistake was to protect Lena. I thought it was, I thought it was very eloquently put, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Well well done again in the acting department. Uh, one that I will say, though, the acting department could have used a bit of work was the final scene with Nia. Because, again, I mean, she senses Brainy's in danger because she finally realizes, oh, these dreams that I'm having about Brainy, maybe they're not just because I have feelings for Brainy. Maybe it's because I have powers that tell me stuff, and I should listen to these powers. Uh, so that was, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that was. But her final moment... I don't know what it was, but just something about the way she was constantly, like, showing her teeth off. I know that sounds weird, but if you watched it, it was like, Brainy, he's the one that saved us. Like, I don't know why she was talking like that, but it was weird. It felt unnatural. <laughs> I know she was in pain because she just got knocked down, but I don't really know anybody that's in pain that talks like this all the time and wants to show off their teeth all the time. <laughs> odd um what else what else brainy like i said he sacrifices himself to again stop part of leviathan don't know why his code didn't do more um but another one that his acting has not been fantastic i did like the turn though when he went from you know having the the inhibitors on the emotional inhibitors he took them off and he did become a different person and i did appreciate that um so it's, it's been interesting to see a different side of Brainy, this one. Much more serious, much more gravitas to his performance, aside from just always talking like this, and I'm a superhero because I'm Brainy. It was much more calculated and much more serious, I guess, is, is the, the right word for it. But yeah, the final scenes, though, with him when he's talking to his other counterpart, his female counterpart, which I did look up, because when I was looking at them, they had him like here and here, I was really looking at them, and I'm like, they either got a really, really good look-alike actress to play this female Brainiac, or they're related, because there's way too many similarities in their face, and sure enough, I looked it up, and they're brother and sister. So I thought that was really cool, because I'm glad that they got somebody that looked much, much like him, <laughs> because that makes sense. If it, even if it's a female version of him, it would still look like him. Um, but yeah, very similar features in a lot of ways there was even a point where i'm just like did they just like put makeup on him and he put on a female voice like did is that possible but no it's brother and sister so confirmed there but that final scene though with them and he's dying and she's there with him i mean got pretty emotional honestly and just the way he delivered his lines they sounded like a robot dying <laughs> which is essentially what it is um so yeah i i thought it was again He's, his acting is not necessarily something that has been up there for me, but this season is really shown that he can bring out a lot more in his performance. And I, I don't know if he's actually going to die because, again, he has sense he was in trouble, so maybe going to go save him uh, next season. But I would like to see a little bit more 
of what he can do as a Brainiac 5 because I, I think they showed a lot of his potential this season. Um, what else? I feel like there's a lot to get through because this is the thing. There's so many moving pieces, and yet <laughs> there's still so many questions to be answered because they had so many moving pieces that didn't wrap up. Uh, the whole thing where they were basically going out pretending to be Kara. Um, I mean, it was okay. Just I, the couple of weird scenes with it, like John turns into Supergirl, and he's like, these parents always chafe. And I'm like, well, you're a Martian that can shapeshift, so why don't you shapeshift into a body that doesn't chafe in those pants? Or maybe even shapeshift the pants themselves so that they don't chafe. It was a stupid line. <laughs> like, I don't know. You could change it to anything, and yet you still complain that your your pants are chafing. You could even change the pants, and you... you so you're the one that made the pants chafe. Are you a masochist? Do you enjoy it when the pants chafe? Are you lying to me right now, John? Um, and then on top of that, just the... You have, you know... John goes out with Nia um, to draw uh, Ramakan. So then he shows up. And then Magan goes out also as Kara with Alex as her backup. And then another one shows up. And there's just some really dumb scenes. Like, first of all, the choreography overall still awful. Uh, one of the final fight scenes when it's like the three Leviathan members versus the four of them. Um, there were just so many moments where I'm like, God, this doesn't feel connected at all. Like the lightning rod woman, she like throws a lightning bolt and nothing happens. Like they don't cut to the lightning striking somebody or hitting near somebody. They cut to like Jean, I, I don't even know, like he threw something at, at one of them, I think. And then we don't even see where that goes. So it just feels like there's a bunch of disconnected scenes and that's and with arrow now gone i really do have to say i miss their fight scenes now because these fight scenes are so so bad um but like i said when they were going through these these moments where ramakan shows up with sean and nia and all of a sudden another guy shows up and the lightning woman shows up next to magon and alex just like there's a moment i don't remember who said it i think it was alex but, because <laughs> they were like, wait, there's more of them? And then Alex shows up. She's like, there's more of us, too, and jumps off. I'm like, what a stupid line. And then on top of that, John does the stupid stereotypical thing where Nia has a brain malfunction because she's dreaming of Brainy. And so whatever the fire guy's name was throws a bolt at them. And Nia, because she's dealing with that, just can't put up her force field anymore. So John's like, Nia! Pushes her out of the way and gets hit himself. Can we stop this trope, please? Because I hate it. Especially when you've got such super powerful beings. I hate the fact that they're just like, Oh, we need John to get hurt so people can be worried about him. It's not going to matter, though, because he's still going to show up for the final fight. But we need John to get hurt, to put a little bit extra tension. So let's just have him push her out of the way and take a shot to the chest. Instead of, I don't know, grabbing her and ducking out of the way. God... And then on top of that, like, we don't even see how the fights all end. They just all of a sudden all show up with Lena and Kara at wherever they were. I'm just like, okay, so we don't even get to see how they got away. They're just done. Fight's over. Woohoo. Ah. So yeah, a lot of stupid stuff there. But to end off, let's talk about the final stupid thing. And again, like I said, a lot of overhyping here. But Alex's new outfit. I didn't even talk about it at the end of last episode because I'm just like, I don't even care. But Kelly talking to Alex, maybe you should, you know, don a mask or something so that way you're not as well known. She's like, are we seriously doing another vigilante story? Seriously? <laughs> God. Man, I'm assuming this is going to be something that is a plot point later. Alex being a vigilante working outside the law, the police are going to be like, how dare you? I, I wouldn't even be surprised if they brought back Maggie. And Maggie's like, Alex, what are you doing? You're working outside the law. How could you? <laughs> Uh, I just I'm not looking forward to it, but God, this beginning of this fucking episode was so bad. It was so so bad because she's like, "Car, I need to show you something." Takes her out of the room for whatever reason. I don't know why. She felt like she needed to only show this to Kara. She turns into it, Kara. <laughs> like I, I don't want to actually scream because I don't want to break your eardrums. Full on, like, screams bloody murder. And of course, by the, the look on her face, you could see, like, she's 
excited. Like, that does not sound like you're excited. Which, also, I will say the fact that she sent 911 because she wanted to talk to everybody about what Lena was telling her. Like, you realize 911 means you're in danger, right? You couldn't, you couldn't have just sent, hey, come to my apartment. Because <laughs> they all burst in, guns a-blazing. But yeah, screams about Alex's new outfit. Like, it's the worst thing she'd ever seen, even though her face says the opposite. So everybody bursts in like, what's going on? Like, oh, it was a scream of joy. And they're all looking at Alex's outfit like, oh, yeah, that looks so good. Oh, that's so cool. Just like, okay, it, it looks like every other superhero suit that I've seen. Why do we have to do this? Why do the writers of all these CW shows feel like the only way that the audience can think something is cool or think something is awesome is if all of the characters are like, that's so cool, that's so awesome. That's not how this works. You have to show me something actually cool for me to feel it. Again, going back to Iris, when she was, when she was the Flash because Barry and her swapped and she got his powers for a day or whatever, when she stopped the tidal wave, it was like, oh yeah, Iris, you're such a good speedster. Barry couldn't even do that. Trying to like hype her up like she's the best thing ever. Even though she constantly showed why she belonged. Because she was very good at what she did behind the computer, organizing, making sure Barry stayed focused, making sure the team stayed focused. And later on, I think in that very same season, she dove off a, <laughs> off a roof to save Barry without any powers. Like, see, this, this is the thing that makes me go, holy crap, Iris is awesome. She just dove off a roof and sa nearly sacrificed herself just so she could save Barry. Like, that's really cool. But everybody going, oh, Iris, you did this, you're so cool. That part of it, I was just like, you don't need to say this because you already showed me that she's so cool with this, what she did. <laughs> oh, God, I, I just don't get it. Like, I don't understand why the writers think that this is the way that you get your audience to, to really feel like something is cool or awesome. Is you have all the characters freak out and be like, yes, this is so cool. Because, <sighs> yeah, I mean, Alex's new outfit, eh, again, it's just very generic. <laughs> she, she's got kind of a goth look to her as well, which I don't think fits Alex that well. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm alone in this. Maybe everybody else watching the show fell for the hype. They're like, oh my gosh, Alex's new outfit is so cool. But for me, I, I'm just like, why are we spending time on this? They even have a moment later where Kelly just has to stop their whole mission because they're trying to track down, I think, where William went. And she has to stop and be like, oh yeah, that outfit. Oh my gosh. I'm just like, you, you literally took about a minute to, to have that conversation? <laughs> Seriously? Uh, yeah, all in all, I mean, this season, not as bad as the worst seasons of Supergirl, mainly because Lex is still involved. But overall, it's just still not good enough. Still a lot of problems with it. Again, you've, you've not wrapped up a lot of your storylines, so there's a lot of stuff that I'm sitting here feeling dissatisfied on because I'm like, well, there's no end to the story, so now I have to wait and see what they do with it in the next season, which I don't know when I'm coming back to this show, but it's going to be a while. And I don't know, I... A good cliffhanger it, it I don't know it's it's done so rarely these days because most of the time they leave you with a ton of questions and go tune in next time you know tune in next season to see what happens next so I feel like that's become the modern day cliffhanger I feel like originally cliffhangers were a way to almost kind of suck you in because you want to see more not in a way that's like, oh, you need to find out what happens next, but more so in a way where you're sitting there going, well, I have to find out what happens next. And I feel like I don't really get that anymore with cliff with most cliffhangers nowadays. You know, most of the time I'm just sitting here going, well, I mean, I guess I'll find out next season, but I could wait. <laughs> I don't have to watch it now. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm just very frustrated with how this season ended because there was a lot of possibility, especially with the whole obsidian thing, escaping your problems, all the message there. I feel like they didn't need to spend so much time talking about their message when they made it so apparent throughout the rest of the season. Um, but it's Supergirl, so what else should I expect? <laughs>
But anyways, with all that being said, that's it for this season. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts of these two episodes and of the season? Of I'm going to try that again. <laughs> what were your thoughts of these two episodes and of the season as a whole? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Supergirl reviews. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace out.